You've gathered all the essences of time. Now I can create something that will aid you. Please visit me after you've grown up. I'll wait for you no matter how long. This is Legendary Adventures, a Legend of Zelda playthrough podcast. This week we're heading up the Black Tower for the final confrontation with Varen, but not before making the final trades of the game. We're in the final stretch of the game. The Maka Tree has asked us to return to her after we've grown up. We know that actually means that when she grows up in the present. But hey, this is a time-traveling adventure, so don't we technically have all the time in the world? I decided to do a little exploring before I ventured into the game's final dungeon. After all, I still had a ukulele to trade. I decided to fill in some of the blank areas of the map, but honestly it did not take me long to find what I was after. I first fast traveled to Lina Village, and saw the largest unexplored area on my map was just east of the village, between the village and the ancient ruins. When I went that way I saw why. Much of the section is taken up by the sea, but there's also a cave which can only be reached with the help of the switch hook. Inside the cave I found an old Zora. The Zora says he misses the sound and smell of the sea even though the sea is just literally feet from his door. His mobility must be very limited. He takes the ukulele because it has the spirit of the sea in it. In exchange, he gives us a broken sword. He tells us it's the sword an ancient hero gave to his ancestors. The inclusion of a broken sword in the trading quest seems to be a nod to Ocarina of Time. There we traded our way up to the Big Goron sword, which was also broken and needed repair. In this game, Patch is the man to see for repairs. So I fast traveled to Symmetry City and again made my way to Restoration Wall below the city. Patch can repair the sword, but we need to play his trap a uh, mini game again to make it happen. It's still an annoying game. Perhaps the most annoying. As a reminder, we need to knock hard hat beetles into holes in the corners of the room, while also occasionally stepping on a floor switch to keep a minecart from crashing into the item we're trying to repair. This time it seems we need to hit all of the monsters in the hole at once, otherwise they respawn instantly. I use the Switch's rewind feature a few times to complete this minigame. When we do, we're rewarded with the Noble Sword. This is a powerful sword that also fires sword beams when Link has full health. Nice! I poked around a bit more after getting the sword, but ultimately I decided against filling in all the blank spots on the maps. I decided that with the trading quest complete and the noble sword in hand, I felt pretty good about just going ahead and finishing the game. So I traveled back to Lina Village and back to the present to meet the Maku Tree. The Maku Tree gives us a Maku Seed. She says it can only be used by a hero who knows the power of the essences of time. She also says such a hero sees truth unwavering across time and space. And if we can do that, we can beat Varen. As soon as we get the seed, the mysterious hooded figure reappears. This figure not only seems to be supporting Varen, but actually directing her actions. And it's revealed to not be one person, but two. The Gerudo witches Kotaki and Kaume, otherwise known as Twin Rova. They say their dark rites will begin soon, and they claim their plan will succeed no matter what Link does. Their goal is to spread sorrow, and it seems to be working. But with the Maku Seed, we can venture into the now completed Black Tower in order to confront Varen. There is no way to enter the tower in the present, so we must travel to the past. Time travel is not allowed on the grounds of the tower, so we have to leave the grounds, travel back to the past, then venture on. Ralph II is at the tower. He tells us he plans to defeat Varen, even if it means killing Queen Ambi. He seems a bit nervous about his plan, but he charges forward all the same. Before we can travel any further, we're stopped by Nehru and Impa. They came to stop Ralph. That's because while researching the past, they discovered that Ralph is a descendant of Queen Ambi. If she dies, he will cease to exist. Ralph knows this and plans to sacrifice himself for the people of Labrina. They ask us to save Ralph's life and save Labrina. The inside of the tower is different from what we saw earlier in the game. 
At that point it was still under construction and was full of workers. This time a lone worker stands inside the now completed tower made of black stone. He says the tower has become full of monsters and is hard to navigate without getting lost. The tower itself spans seven floors. The first three floors are something of a combat gauntlet. There aren't any monsters we haven't seen before, but many of them are stronger variants of the creatures that we normally see. On the third floor we come to three doors side by side. Link immediately pulls out the Maku Seed. The essences emerge from behind it and swirl around. It's not unlike the moment we play the Ballad of the Windfish with all eight instruments to open the egg in Link's Awakening. The three doors become one. Through the door we find a maze that spans two floors. The walls of the maze are made up of different sculptures of heads with green eyes. There are multiple staircases that we use to travel between the third floor and fourth floor, as we make our way to the goal, which is a staircase in the center of the fourth floor. It reminds me of the portal maze found in Ganon's Tower in A Link to the Past, but using stairs instead of portals. There are also dark nuts in the third floor sections of the maze that we have to deal with, and whiz robes on the fourth floor. I found the dark nuts in particular to be a little annoying because of the narrow passages. When we head up to the fifth floor, we'll find it features 24 staircases in four rows of six. Every staircase leads up to the sixth floor, but only one leads to the correct path forward. On the sixth floor, there are three staircases. Two of them are on a lower level of the room. A third staircase is on a raised level of the floor. That's the one we're trying to reach. We need to find the correct staircase on the fifth floor to reach that staircase and the path to the seventh floor. An owl statue near the center of the maze on the fourth floor gives us this hint. Truth glares at your back. I completely misinterpreted this hint. It's supposed to give us directions on how to navigate the fifth floor. I took the owl statue's hint to be referring to one of the statues on the third or fourth floor. They all look the same and face the same way, so I couldn't figure out what it meant by glaring at my back. I ended up getting the solution from a walkthrough. It's the second staircase from the end of the bottom row. And how are we supposed to know? Well, when we first enter the fifth floor, we're surrounded by flames, which then move around the room. The light from the flame is the glare that the owl is referring to, and the flame at Link's back is the one that leads to the correct staircase. On the seventh floor, we reach Varen inside the body of Ambi. Ralph is there as well. Ralph has Varen at sword point, but she knows full well that Ralph is an ancestor of Ambi and will cease to exist if he kills Ambi. Ralph backs away at first, but buckles down, seemingly determined to defeat Varen, even if it means he will die. He rushes forward, but is defeated in a white flash. Varen spares Ralph's life, and flees to the next room. Ralph says he couldn't actually go through with killing Ambi, but stays slumped on the floor. In the next room, we fight Varen. Repeated bosses have been a fixture of the series from the very beginning but there's only one repeated fight in Oracle of Ages. The fight with Varen in Ambi's body is a repeat of the fight with Varen in Nehru's body. She teleports around a room filled with pillars. We hit her with a mystery seed and then use the switch hook to remove Varen away from Ambi, and then land hits with the sword. The fight was over in about a minute and a half for me, but it's only the first phase of the final boss fight. Once Ambi is free, she runs away. Link manages to avoid being possessed, and Varen then transforms. She says it is her true form. She looks like a big fairy with large wings and antenna. Varen also makes four Dark Link duplicates of Link. They behave like the mimic enemies seen in other places in the game and mirror Link's movements. Varen flies off screen and occasionally spits energy balls at us. We hit her with a sword as she flies by. I felt this fight was fairly easy. I never ran into a mimic and once the fight was over, I knew it could not truly be the end. Nehru and Ralph appear. They say the time-related chaos should end now that Varen is defeated. All three start to head to the exit. But as soon as the trio approach the exit, Varen's voice is heard, saying that it's not over. A wall master grabs Link and drops him into a pitch-black room. Varen appears, saying that she did not want to reveal her hideous form, but she has no choice. She actually has three forms that she shifts between in this final fight. The first is kind of like a turtle in appearance. She tucks her head inside a shell and leaps around the room. When she lands, she is briefly surrounded by lava. 
After a few leaps, she sticks out her head, and we can land hits with the sword. Occasionally, Varen will transform into a large spider. She spits out a web which Link can get stuck in, and then she pulls him in to deal some damage. She also leaps in the air and tries to crush Link and charges at him. It took me a bit to figure out how to damage this form. There is a bush in the center of the room that grants bombs when cut. I tried getting a bomb caught in the web, but the timing never seemed to work. Eventually I realized I just need to hit her with the bomb. That causes her to reel back, revealing her face, and then we can hit her with the sword. Still, this was the most difficult form, and I used a magic potion during this fight. Varen also transforms into a giant bee. There's no trick to this form. We just land hits with the sword. When we defeat Varen, she says it's too late. Her role in Twin Rova's plan was to disrupt the currents of time to flood humanity with sorrow. She says the sorrow has already passed through the tower and lit the blue flame for Twin Rova. Link escapes the tower to find Nehru and Ralph waiting for him. As they leave the tower grounds, they are met by Ambi and several soldiers. She had run back to her castle to get back up to help with the fight against Varen, but she didn't make it back in time. Ambi thanks Link for defeating Varen and restoring everyone back to normal. Nehru, Ralph, and Link return to the present. Elsewhere, a blue flame burns. Link can be seen inside. The Gerudo witches stand over it. It is the Flame of Sorrow. The witches say the flame will grant their wish. For now, Labrina is saved. As the credits roll, we see happy scenes all around. A statue has been erected in honor of Link and placed near the Maku tree. In the past, we see it was commissioned by Queen Ambi. Nehru again sings to a captivated audience. Link teaches Ralph how to be a true hero, and Link may even learn a thing or two from him. And yet, the danger still lurks, and another adventure lies ahead. The adventure continues in Oracle of Seasons. Next week we'll talk about the world of Oracle of Ages, before closing the book on this game and moving on to Seasons. If you want to follow along, please consider subscribing. And a big thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. I really appreciate you liking what I'm doing and following along. I'm Paul Riley, and I will see you next week.